Thanks for staying with us at STL TV Live. I'm Sarah Bernard, and here with my guests, Loriana Sikarski and Brittany Hoffman of Bonsai. Brittany is a student at, at the University of Missouri at Columbia, and Loriana is head of the Bonsai organization. And we've been talking about transitions in life and how many people make a transition to their true passion in midlife or later in life, and they say, oh, I always wanted to do this, and now I'm going to do it. But, Brittany, you had that, um, the, for the good fortune, I would say, to go back to what your true passions were at, at a young age and kind of give yourself a restart. And, Loriana, how do you feel, like, what, how, where do these expectations come from, and how can we really understand the expectations on us as people but, but also kind of set boundaries to be our true authentic selves? That's a great question, and I think part of it is just thinking about who is in influencing you and encouraging you in what direction. And so what I ask clients to do is actually create a list and say, what are those messages they're receiving from? It could be parents. Even people in their midlife are receiving mm -hmm. messages from their parents on mm -hmm. what to do. Uh, it could be the news, the media, friends, children. Uh, you could be expected to earn a high income. You could be expected to do a certain career because it's prestigious. And to take a look at that and really mirror that to, are these my values or are these other people's values? Mm -hmm. And I think one reason people often switch at midlife is because they get so frustrated and burned out, they finally said, I've had enough. But mm -hmm. if you do that sooner, and that's what I encourage students to do, and really pursue who they are themselves. And one thing, when I was changing careers a few years ago, and I said, what do I want to do? There are a lot of expectations. Well, you should keep a stable job. You're at a university. Keep that government job, my dad said. Mm -hmm. and, and while there's value in that, my passion was helping people, and that's where my joy is. And mm -hmm. so I left that and took the risk to start Bonsai so I could pursue it. And I really encourage people because there's nothing like doing what you love. Exactly. And so having been through that same transition yourself, mm -hmm. it's easier to relate to these things that people are, they're, the powers they're fighting within themselves, really. And Brittany had courage. She had a lot of courage to stand up to those yeah. Mm -hmm. So, Brittany, how did it feel for you when you finally made that decision? I'm sure you can remember that moment or that day that you were going to go for your dream of becoming a veterinarian. Mm -hmm. How did that feel? Oh, so nerve-wracking. <laughs> I remember it like it was just yesterday. I just, in my stomach, I felt the butterflies. Process. The process. The yeah. process was nerve-wracking. But once you made that decision. Oh, amazing. I mean, I just, I felt like I was just doing what God called me to do. So did it feel free? Oh, yeah. Definitely. Yeah. So I'm curious what advice each of you might have. Lorian. well, let's start with, with you, Brittany, because you've just recently gone through this in a big way. Advice, um, in your case, for college students, um, for high school seniors who are, are making that decision, and everyone asks, well, what's your major going to be? Or, you know, you put that on your college mm -hmm. application. How important is it that you, that, that, that you know that at that moment? I would say as cliche as it sounds, just follow your heart. And, you know, do what you feel called to do and do what you're passionate about. And what if a, an 18-year-old doesn't know what they're called to do? Because not everybody has the clarity that right. you had, even though you were pushing it away. Right. I think soul-searching is incredibly important. Mm -hmm. And with Loriana's uh, project, we had a personal development plan, and we were encouraged to write out a list of energy givers, energy depleters. And so your energy givers are things that you – you feel energized with life about, you know, mm -hmm. and for me, that was animals. I just felt so happy always being around animals, and so I thought this is what I want to do, you know, among other things, and so I think knowing yourself is incredibly important when it comes to figuring out a career path. Yeah, and you have a big animal of your own, right? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm, I'm remembering this. Tell us about your pet. I have a 140-pound Bloomberg Great Dane, and he is a total goofball and just totally lights of my life. I love it. So you're a college student with an animal larger than you yeah. living in your apartment. Okay. <laughs> Loriana, what advice do you have um, also for people, um, for young people who are starting out, and uh, what kinds of coaching are you doing with young people, similar to with what you've done with Brittany? Uh, w one resource I would suggest is Strength Finder. A lot of campuses use it. It's ten dollars online. At you could look up Google Strength Finder. That will help identify some of your strengths. And these are things you cannot not do. So if you're in a job where you don't get to execute those, you're going to be very frustrated. Mm -hmm. Uh, the other thing, um, which is not necessarily career-oriented, but there be very wise budget. Um, wise. A lot of people get locked into careers they don't like because they're financially having to take that higher paycheck. And so if you can be flexible, that gives you a lot of power to do what you really love. 
Okay, good. And so what other what types oh. of coaching are you doing right now? Well, actually, this is an exciting project that I'm a part of. Uh, Monsanto sponsoring it, and it is a cutting-edge preparation for plant science PhDs. And we've taken 14 elite students at Mizzou to give them the soft skills so that they're successful in a leadership role when they graduate. And all those, they're great technically, but they don't know how to interface or collaborate as well as they would need to if they're going to be a leader someday. Mm -hmm. So we are doing one-on-one -on -one coaching as well as group coaching to really shorten that learning curve for them. Yeah. And they're doing awesome. Great, it's great. exciting. So right here in St. Louis at Montana, we've got some great coaching going mm -hmm. on with young people. That's wonderful. You can get in touch with Bonsai or discover the full breadth of all of their services. Visit their website, growwithbonsai.com. Stay tuned. We'll be back with no sweat presentations after this quick break.